Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be utilizing SVG which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics and uh, our own Movit library which is like a JavaScript library that can animate path in SVG. Uh, you can see that you can, we, 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 we're going to go create this cool loading animation, circular animation and you cannot definitely do it with uh, normal CSS. The only thing you can do, I had a tutorial uh, a while ago on how to create something super similar in SVG. Uh, is this one. I'm going to put the link to this tutorial anyways uh, in this video. But you can see that the length of a stroke doesn't change. So it's always the same length. But here, as you can see, the length of the stroke changes over time. So it gets to zero and then again... Uh, gets back to you know 70% or something uh, so it's it's a bit cooler and it's one of the loaders that uh, Google introduced when they defined the principles of material design so without further ado uh, let's get started but again let me show you other cool stuff that you can do with uh, the movie library that we've developed so you can create this cool loader infinite loader like this or I did a prototype like this. Uh, you can you can do any type of. It's it's all about your imagination. You can create any cool stuff uh, with animating the path in SVG using our library. So let's get started. Uh, if you guys uh, haven't seen my previous tutorials on SVG, so we developed a library called Move It. So I will put the link to this library. Uh, it's a, some 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 uh, specific introduction on how to use it, but you don't need to actually. So the way you're gonna use this library is that you click on the releases over here, and then you basically download a zip or tar of this, and then there is like a move it JS file, and then you can include that in your. Um, project and then start including that in your uh, HTML file and use it. So let's get started by going to kotos.com and create a new prototype. What I'm going to do is that I am going to create a container as always uh, with a class container and center that in the page. So container position absolute uh, left 50% top 50% and then transform uh, translate minus 50% and again minus 50% so now whatever I put in this container goes in the middle of the page right so if I type Kotos you can see that it's kind of in the middle of the page so now I am going to create my SVG element I will give it a width of let's say 200 and height of 200 and then within my SVG I will create a circle uh, element and I will set its uh, center to be CX100 uh, and CY100. So using CX and CY I can assign the center and according to the width and height of my SVG it will end up in the center of my SVG and let's give it a radius of 20. Right. So now we have our SVG over here. I'm gonna style it a little bit. So circle and then I want the field to be none and then stroke to be maybe uh, let's give it a yellow green and then give it a uh, maybe stroke width of maybe five right and then let's change the background to, of our body to be uh, background let's say black right so we have this cool over here I'm gonna switch the layout to this layout so that I have more space over here and then what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to my JavaScript and I'm gonna include the move it library the way I do it I have already uploaded uh, the move it.js in our uh, web host and what I'm gonna do add a new library and I'm gonna include it Http www.kotos.com slash moveit.0.3.js. So I basically 
rename that movie.js to movie.0.3 uh, and then uploaded it to our host but again whenever you are on this uh, link you go to release page and then you just download the v4 and then you know rename I'm using this one but you just rename that to whatever you want and then include it in your project right so let's save it we introduced a new uh, structure for move it so the way we're going to do that is that I know that I already have a circle let's give it a class of uh, loader maybe and then I will go to my JavaScript and say var loader equals to document dot query selector and uh, passing it the loader class that I assigned so now I have that loader referenced in my JavaScript and then I will say var loading animation and then I will do like uh, new move it so this is how you initialize the move it library passing the loader as the first argument and then second you pass an object defining the start zero percent of the whole uh, length of the path and then end to be let's say one percent right so as you can see it, it just chop it up so that it only shows zero to one percent of the whole path of the circle. One of the good things with Moveit library is that uh, it actually calculates the length of the primary shapes in SVG like circle, rectangles, polygon. Uh, most of the libraries need you to define any of the shapes in form of a path element but uh, Moveit kind of supports the circle which is good. So we have this then what I'm gonna do is that I am going to say loading animation dot set so now I want to animate it right and then pass it an object defining the final sort of uh, start and end position for my animation right so I'll say start to be 1% and then end to be 70% right 70% and obviously I need to define a duration let's put it 0 0.5 so as you can see, it animates from 0 to 1% to 1 to 70% of the length of my circle stroke uh, and the duration is 0 0.5. So I, if, I, if I run it, rerun it again, you can see that we have this kind of animation. And then the cool thing with the new version of Moveit is that you can define a callback function in, in, the, in the object that you pass to the set function. So callback, and I just define a function and then I can create another animation which I want to happen after the initial animation that I created so I will say in my callback function I'll say loading animation dot set again and now what I would do is that I change the start to be 100% and the end to be 101% right so if I run it again and then obviously I need to define a duration for that animation as well. So duration 0. Point, sorry, no string 0. 0.8. Right? So you can generally see what happens is that you have this very cool uh, animation using two set functions. So what happened here is that I initialized the movie library, passing it the element that I have in my SVG with its class, so it's circle, right? And then say new, move it, and then pass it at the first, and then initialize it with the start zero and end 1%, and then I will start my animation by using the set function, pass it in a function, uh, passing it an object, and then setting my start and end again, which is in this case 1% and 70%, which I came up with some trial and error, and then I gave it a duration of 0 0.5 and then when this animation finishes I want to run the second animation by passing that new animation on the callback uh, property over here which I define a function right so again we have this cool animation so now I want this animation to be infinite like running all the time right the way I want to do that is that I'm gonna move all of these animation in a function so I'll define a function anim 
let's say, and then just paste that animation over here, as you can see. And then if I call this anim function again here, it will run our animation, right? Like this, again, right? Now, in order to make it like uh, sort of uh, infinite, what I need to do is that I need to define another callback function at the end of my animation sequence. So the first, and then inside the callback function, I say this is the second animation that I would like to have. And then on the call callback function of the last one, I just call the function again, right? So you can see that if I call the function again, it reruns the function, but the problem is that since I already uh, trans translated to this, translated the path to this position, it starts to go again, back flipping to one and 70. And to fix that so that it continues again from the original space, I'm gonna do follow true, right? There you go. So now you have this cool infinite rotating animation. So again, created a function within that function. I use the set function of move it, defining my next positions for my animation to go to for the stroke, obviously. Define the duration, and then in its callback function, I just defined another set, and then with a new start and end. But since the end value is more than the initial value, I have to set the follow property to true so that it kind of follows again to start it over, right? And obviously in the callback function, I say, go ahead and run the animation again, right? So this is the initial part, the first part. And if you look at this, it's actually a bit different. So what happens is that it seems like there are two rotations happening. And to do that, what we need to do is go into our CSS, and I know that I have my SVG over here, so we already have a animation that happens on the circle, and then I am going to define another animation on the SVG. So what I'm gonna do is that SVG, I'm gonna uh, define my animation in the beginning, so keyframes, let's call it rotate, and then I don't want anything to happen, uh, in the initial or the from position, but in the two, I'm going to say transform, rotate, a full rotation of a circle. So 360 degree, right? And then I will pass that as my animation on the parent SVG, right? So animation, rotate. So the length of that animation should match the length of the whole animation, which is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.8, which is 1.3 seconds, right? So I will set that as my parent timing. And now you can see that if I set this to infinite, you can see that we have this very cool type of animation, which consists of two uh, rotating animation, one using move it, for the circle itself, and one using CSS on the parent SVG, which ends up with this very cool rotating animation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's actually intermediate to advanced. I recommend you to go uh, download the MoveIt library uh, and unzip it and use the moveit.js within that, include that into project or also follow up the instruction here if you're interested to create exactly the same thing, follow this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Please help me uh, by sharing this tutorial, liking this tutorial to create more awesome tutorials like this. I hope you have a very good day and night and see you next time. Goodbye.